Good morning from Universal Studios, Florida. Just opening up here. Gonna head around the park, point out some of my favorite things, some little secrets, some little Easter eggs, if you will, today. And with me today is Mike. Now, let's take a closer look. And this is kind of brand new for the park, this whole overlay they've they come up with. This was uh, the Lucy experience at one point, the Lucy tribute, and then it was the Betty Boop store. But there's a lot of little hidden things among these uh, these posters. This, this Jurassic Park here and Trolls, Fast and the Furious, Bride of Frankenstein, Life Finds a Way, Jurassic Park, Us, some more Trolls, Trolls and Shrek, Minions, Jaws. On this side, I see Toothless, more Trolls, Minions, Felix the Cat. Out of Time, Back to the Future, Kung Fu Panda. That's crazy, man. So cool, they're, they're giving tribute to these things. And also, look at this. You got Bruce the Shark here at the front, yeah. and Felix the Cat. Let's check it out. Look at these minions, dude. 100 bucks, kid robot. And the, the new clothes and stuff are really cool. Look at this, Back to the Future. <gasps> Great Scott. Twin Pines Mall. Oh, oh, that's cool. Are you telling me this sucker <laughs> is nuclear? Oh, the sucker's electrical. <laughs> oh, look at all the new uh, Jaws stuff, buddy. Ambi Swim Club. Jaws hoodie. All kinds of stuff over here pertaining to. Oh, I need that in my life. Oh, yeah. Summer tie dye, oh, baby. Yeah. That's awesome. Shirts, bags. This is great. A lot of new, uh, a lot of new stuff in here. ET shirt, and then look around here at top. I see uh, more artwork. If you guys can point anything, oh, I see Chucky there. All right, continuing our journey. Gonna take a right, head towards the lagoon and Delancey Street and Sting Alley. Got a lot of secrets over here. Now these apartments right here, the Barnes apartments, are a tribute to the uh, the Huxtables. Dr. Huxtable's uh, apartment right there, Bill Cosby. And then to the right, right here, O'Rourke's, which the proprietor, if you look on the door, is a one Kelly O'Rourke. And the godfather, Luca Brasi's girlfriend, was Kelly O'Rourke. It's a tragic story with that, but they paid tribute to The Godfather around here. Also, they paid tribute to the movie The Sting a lot here. Now, this is Delancey Street. Delancey Street is used for a lot of filming, a lot of music videos in the past. A lot of uh, secrets down here. First one we'll show, Adrian's Pet Shop here. A little tribute to Rocky. Lots of different films. You know, little nods and stuff here. Now, right up here, architect and land planner. If you're a real big fan of Universal and know important names, there's one right there for you. Look that guy up. Also, they filmed the opening to all that from Nickelodeon right here. They had kids jumping on uh, trampolines right here near Sting Alley. Now, this area is used in a lot of film and television as well. This is Sting Alley, and there's a lot of nods through here paying tribute to the movie, The Sting. But this has been used in countless movies, TV shows, commercials, you name it. In fact, I did the filming locations for all that here at Universal Studios. I'll put a link to that right now so you guys can check out those filming locations. And right here, they used this in a movie called Matinee with John Goodman, did those filming locations as well. And back on this side of New York, right up here, if you are a fan of the rock group Led Zeppelin, there's a window right up there paying tribute. John Bottom, J.P. Jones, Jay Page, Robert Plant. Right there. Random as can be. Now this haagen plays tribute to the Hudson Street Home for the Girls used in the film Annie. This would have been uh, Annie's home for the girls where she stayed. I always have to point this out. The Gotham Ice Company. Looks like something you would see in Batman, right? Like the sewers or something. But it's just a bathroom. But... I wanted to throw it in here because I'm sure people will look and see Gotham 
Batman. Where's Batman? Is he in the bathroom? This is very interesting today. They don't have a queue set up out front of the attraction. It kind of looks like it did back in the day of Confrontation. Did you guys know that this is uh, based off the Paramount Theater in uh, New York City? It's where uh, a lot of films debuted, but one that always sticks out in my mind is Love Me Tender by Elvis Presley. They actually had a cutout of Elvis in New York right there and unveiled who the, uh, the superstar was for the film. If you're a Ghostbusters fan, you're in luck because did you know that back in the day, this was actually the entrance to the Ghostbusters spooktacular show they had here at Universal Studios. You would walk in right through here and it still is paying tribute to the Ghostbusters headquarters here. Engine 89. And on this side, above and beyond, paranormal travel agent. Who are you going to call? Somebody else. Now, they did use this Metropolis tribute in the Superboy TV show, but uh, now it's for a part of the queue for Race to New York starring Jimmy Fallon. But on the windows, there's a few names that might stick out um, who were executives here at Universal Studios in some form or fashion. And to the left, all through here, is a bunch of props and everything from Twister, which used to sit here, where Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon now sits. But if you look through here, there's the shirt that Bill Paxton was wearing. Kind of like the same shirt he was wearing in the queue. And then if you look up here, all these uh, newspapers up here talk about different things in the, uh, the park here. It's kind of cool. Like, kind of looking around, World Expo debuts, that's over near uh, you know, The Simpsons. Need Paranormal Investigation. Um, what do we have over here? Bulls Gym. Bulls Gym, yeah. And I want to say like in these little uh, stamps somewhere it says Twister. At some point, one of these, I believe said Wakita on it, which is uh, the town that Twister takes place in. It's true. Yep. They had All no right. warning. Let's, uh, let's continue the journey. And directly underneath, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket are the sound stages, and there's an old entrance to the uh, original back lot here. You can go inside and get a close look at the sound stages and a tram tour back in the day. And it takes place right here in front of stage 22. You see the theatrical and television Good. production facilities yep. Yep. right there. Well, that fence used to not be there. You used to walk back there, and they had a tram tour that would take you all around Universal Studios. And one of the highlights was right here. This was the Boneyard. They would have all kinds of props and different things from movies out here. What a time. We're gonna skim through the new Minion Land right now. Papa Nana, I think is what you call it. That's what Papa Nana. Papa Nana. Papa Nana. Papa Nana. Pop A Nana. Papa Nana, you popping something over here. This is the former home of the classic monsters. The monsters used to sit right here and spin around right above that popcorn area. And then right here was the entrance to the greatest cafe known to man. Well, human. Human. Yeah. yeah. Look at these guys. Anti gravity got the minions and they're floating. I can't believe they let somebody come in here and, and tag this with graffiti. Graffiti? What's, What's happening to this park? What is going on here? Monsters didn't do this kind of stuff. But these minions, well, it's all right. We just go to the Bank of Evil here, Mike. Sick vandalism. Sick vandalism. That's right. Hung up by their Buster Browns. Look at this guy. He, that guy is not messing around. Bank of Evil here. You can pick up your phone right here. The mobile pickup. Pick up your phone there. And there's some popsicles in here too. The Minion one, crew, Vector. This brand new quality in theme parks. Genuine Minion quality. Okay, I can get behind that. And there are the Minions over there meeting their fans. And there's the Gill Man's great uncle, Frankie Fishlips. It is weird to stand under here, under the former home of both Alfred Hitchcock, The Art of Making Movies, and Shrek 4D, and look across the street and not see the Monster Cafe. This is blowing my mind. 
However, I love this. It's a great addition to Universal. I'm into it. They got characters over here, Illumination Theater. It's really good. It is a lot of fun. Now, pay attention to the uh, the two gift shops they have here, both super silly stuff and evil stuff. All right, continuing our journey. Gonna get out of Sting Alley area, but. There's also more Godfather references over here with uh, Louis Pizza. What about Louis? That's right. Uh, well, from The Godfather, uh, this is where Michael Corleone whacks Salazzo. This is when they, uh, he's, uh, like he slaps him? He whacks him. Oh, and oh. That's an uh, Italian term for, uh -huh. uh, you know. Uh huh. He's, he's not with us. He's sleeping with the fishes he's, now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and this is paying tribute to that. That's cool, man. Louis Pizza, but further down from Louis is our next stop, Mr. Lou Wasserman. Now, the interesting thing about this statue here of Lou Wasserman, the head of the statue is Lou Wasserman's face and likeness. However, the bottom half of this is one Abraham Lincoln. That's right, that is Abraham Lincoln's body right there and Lou Wasserman's head. Now, Lou Wasserman was the chairman of MCA Universe Studios. And, uh, had a lot to do with this park opening. Straight ahead, Guy Ridelli. There was a scene in Problem Child 2 that was filmed right here. Junior and Trixie were running this way when they were uh, running away from home to go to the Love Rock. You can see a, uh, a closed down Universal Studios back in those days when they were doing the, the filming. Now, if you're a fan of Beetlejuice, the only thing left here from the Graveyard Review is straight ahead, the little fountain here which definitely still has that Beetlejuice charm to it. You remember this fountain right here? Then you would go straight in to the stage in the graveyard review what happened. Now we are currently in San Francisco. Now I've done a video pointing out all of these buildings and actually matching them up with what they are based off of. If you want to check that video out, do so now. We're going to go visit uh, our good buddy Bruce the Shark real quick. Always love walking up and saying hello to Bruce the Shark. And uh, just giving you guys kind of a, a sneak peek. We've got a, another episode of Monster Camp coming out soon. I wonder what it could be about. Hmm, we have to think about that. But next time you're over here, come and uh, take a photo with Bruce the Shark here. One of the last few remaining things from Amity. And you guys can pick up some really cool pennies here, including the shark himself hanging right there. Now straight ahead is Diagon Alley, and if you uh, slow down a bit, Pay attention, there's a record shop right over here. And there's a nice little uh, tribute to Jaws. Yeah, there it is. Here's this one with bow-legged women, the Quint Trio. Showed this a lot of times, but nice little tribute to Jaws here, right outside of Diagon Alley. Now there's more secrets in Diagon Alley, but those are gonna be for another day. There's a lot of secrets and hidden things here at Universal Studios. A lot of this stuff is just, you know, from random memory that I have as I'm walking around. But I've done some detailed videos about a lot of these secrets, but here's something to kind of help you and aid you if you're looking for secrets throughout your day while you're visiting the park. Now, if you didn't know, this was the former home of Back to the Future, the ride. In fact, this whole area here was dedicated to Back to the Future. And these games are all from Amity, all from the Jaws area. And even though we don't have Back to the Future or Jaws, there still is the screen used Jules Verne train from part three straight ahead. Now the DeLorean is not screen used, but this is the screen used Jules Verne train. Did a video kind of proving it, even though it is, you know, a known thing. But did an entire video talking about it, showing pictures and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, point this out to people. And also, don't forget, point out my two favorite things. Emmett L. Brown on the front here, right below the flux capacitor. Which is what makes time travel possible. Well, I covered a good chunk of the park. Gonna kind of do more series on this, just random secrets that you might like as you're walking around the parks of Universal and Islands of Adventure and even the Disney parks. But this was a fun episode. I'm glad you guys tagged along. Mike tagged along. This was a lot of fun. But the next time you were here at Universal Studios, find some of these secrets, point them out, tell someone, I told you. But we came, we saw, we took care of business here today at Universal Studios. And I will see you guys on the next adventure. Until then, stay weird. Goodbye.